and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. Welcome to Love Line. I'm Dr. Drew. The phone number here, 1 800 L O V E 191. I am the board certified internist, addiction medicine guy. Adam Kroll is the uh, smart ass that will be here any second. There actually was a huge accident on the freeway into, into the studio tonight, and I barely got here on time. And Mr. Kroll leaves, you know, tons of time to get here early, he sits back, has some coffee, checks his email. He, he preparing for the show for, oh, at least a minute and a half before the show starts, I'd say. One minute before the show starts, they're, they're telling me from the peanut gallery. But actually, he'll, he'll be here in just a second. This is uh, no fault of his. Awful night on the freeways here in Los Angeles. But I will take some calls in the meantime. Let's go, first of all, to Becca, who is 19. Becca, how are you? Oh, I'm 16, not 19. 16, all right, what's up? Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I have this boyfriend, you know. We've been going out for nearly a month now. Mm-hmm. Thing is, we've known each other for a whole lot longer than that. I mean, he knew me when I was dealing with a little asshole of a boyfriend. Well, right. now, was he the guy that was there to console you when... Um... Well, he's not just consoling, he was just my friend. All right. Yeah. Well, there's a reason he was your friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, he probably was into you from the beginning. That's why he's... But, but you didn't reciprocate. That's why well, kind of settled for friendship. So, okay. Well, I mean, I know when he started liking me. He told me and everything. Uh, but, um... It was right. It was a long time before you became friends, right? Oh, no. Uh-huh. It was after, after we became friends. Okay. But, um... Like, after... You know, now that we're going out, I've, like... You know, at first I liked him, and now I'm actually realizing that I'm starting to fall in love with him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like when I'm not around him, I really want to be. How long have you been with him? Um, well, I mean, actually going out. Yeah. Um, almost a month now. Okay. Have you had... Like I said, it started like a long time ago. I, 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 yeah, yeah, that's irrelevant. So have you started having the talk yet? Um, about love? You no. You started talking, you know, the talk? Which talk? The talk about what what this relationship is, where we're going, are we committing, are we boyfriend well, girlfriend? Right, we sort of you know kind of stuck with uh, the here and now, right now. Okay, hold on a second. Adam just came in. He, that wasn't that traffic. Something else. Oh, sorry, yeah. I'm late. Yeah, no, no. I explained what happened out there. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I still shouldn't have been late, but well, I barely made it. You know, my move is this is my move in life. I like to get off the freeway of life. You know what I'm saying? This time you look like you didn't, you didn't even come dressed. <laughs> what, the, what, the, what the F is going on here? <laughs> Let me close on. How dare you? How dare you attempt to titillate the listeners, Drew? Holy Christ. All right, what's this bitch's problem? Let's Becca, go. Becca had a... Well, 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 you were talking about the freeway first. The freeway oh, my blind. God. Hey, here's my problem. And, and listen, everyone listen to me. Don't do what Big A does. <laughs> Big A will not stop for the freeway of life. He will get off the first off-ramp. Uh-oh. And then he will get lost. Uh-oh. And he will get down in the middle of everywhere. And here's the thing about uh, downtown L.A. All illegal immigrants. Yeah. So no one has a driver's license. Everyone's under 50 UI. Yeah. And nobody has insurance. And the so, other the great thing, uh, it's not like there was a Laker game letting out right at Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So everyone drives 15 miles an hour, and then I just uh, curse foreigners, ride my horn, and like drive on the wrong side of the street. It's great. Did you see the accident? It was awful. So, yeah, what happened? Was, I saw a couple Helicopters. Of, yeah, and flipped over and stuff. Man. Good times. Mm. Um, all right, Becca had a boyfriend who was sort of lurking around while she was with a bad guy. You know, kind of, you know the, the mm-hmm. kind of boyfriend I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. The yeah, one. the guy who ended up cheating on me for two weeks. You yeah. Know. This guy? The current guy cheated on you? No, the, the old, old guy. Yeah. Right. The, the, this guy was waiting, biding his time, waiting to make his move, see? That's right. what he was doing. That's why he was your, quote, friend. Uh, and now she, they've been dating a month, and she's really getting into it, and she doesn't know if he is. Well, is, that, is, that, is that about right? Yeah, it's pretty much. All right. So how do you tell if a guy's into it? You ask him. How old is he? <laughs> well, see, he's 17. He's 17 and she's you're 16. 19? She's 16. No, I'm 16. Oh. All right. Probably went through this before mm-hmm. when I was driving in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, see, I'm his first girlfriend. All right. Then he should be into you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm his first girlfriend. All right. So what's the problem? Second. What's the question? I don't get it. He's into you. I promise. I just... Okay. My problem is I don't know how to tell him. That you're in love with him? Yeah. I have. I'm terrible about revealing okay. my emotions. That's fine. Now, my luck is going to be that he's going to listen to the show. Yeah. So I'm not going to have to tell him. <laughs> I see. That's why you're calling. All right. Well, no, you no, that's job. not. All right. That's, no, fine. that's why you're calling. Look, you don't have to make the announcement. You know, when you're younger, Drew, you get all caught up in that. 
Yeah. Guys screw up all the time. Yeah. It's the eight month period. When do I tell her? No one has said anything. The chick says it to the guy. The guy says, I I, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And uh, then he doesn't get laid for no. another four months. No, it's, I love you too. Yeah, just go along with it. Just, yeah, you. go along. This is an important call for you, Adam. It's Lee. He's 14. Uh, yeah, about a four- week ago. 14? Uh, yeah. It's another one of these 14 year olds sounds like 27. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all right, yeah. go yeah, ahead. That's all right. All right, well, about a week ago, I called this in because this is one of Adam's worst fears. Mm-hmm. All right, well, like a week ago, I was beating off in the shower, mm-hmm. and I was really getting into it, and I slipped, and mm-hmm. I fell. Mm-hmm. And I really bruised my tailbone bad. Right. And I thought I broke it, so I went to the hospital. <laughs> What'd but you land it, on? Did you just land on the I tub just, bottom? Yeah, the tub bottom. Not, not some bench on the side, some edge of, a, of the side of the tub or anything? No, I, I just fell. Yeah. Uh, what, did, what did you tell the emergency room personnel? I just told them I slipped. Let me tell you something about that uh, bathroom. It's no jimboree. In yeah. there, Drew. Something There's like, nothing, there, nothing but tile and cast iron and sharp protruding metal, and hot water. chromed objects, and hot water. And you're marching around there with your nuts hanging out. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's really it's the most dangerous environment for your ass and nuts. Yeah. I mean, you have water everywhere. You have these porcelain slick surfaces, Absolutely. and everything. Oh, hold on, I got to talk about M- this most now. accidents in the home happen in the bathroom. Well, why wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm surprised uh, thousands aren't killed. Well, they probably are yeah. millions each year. I mean, here's the deal. Every surface. Let's just picture. Let's just take the tub area for a second. Everything, every corner is broken, every edge is rounded off. There's nothing to get a grip on. I mean, right. everything is a smooth, right. round if surface. If you start going, you're picking up speed, no matter what. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's, re- it's really like a ha- half pipe yeah. in, it's, in skateboarding or, terms. Or hell, just a, a, a luge. Right. It's, just, it's street luge. Yeah. And everything is slick. Everything has a mirror finish, porcelain finish on it. And if you hit your head... The best thing you could possibly do is maybe some grout, because you got your choice between some tile, some uh, cast iron tub, maybe a fixture that's protruding, or some uh, soap dish or some uh, some uh, granny's uh, granny's goose bar that she has to lift herself off of. I mean, it's all dangerous. And the percentage of tubs that have those little, little skid daisies down at the bottom zero. about two percent, yeah, maybe. The showers zero. Think about it. Yeah. The, yeah, I don't. Know. And then you beat off in there. You close your eyes. <laughs> Maybe you had a couple of uh, tall boys. You got a little buzz going. You close your eyes. You start drifting off. You start. You start wavering a little bit. And pow! I could see this happening a lot. Yeah. This uh, the, maybe there's a new uh, sort of service you could provide. Yeah, some sort of emergency you know, services and just clean up and just, you know, less that we be caught in an embarrassing situation after such. Well, an that's my see. This is my number one fear: is that I go down, yeah. I whack my head on the soap dish on oh, the way yeah. down in the mid. That's where they find me. Mid rigor mortis. That's right. Hand clinging junk, semen still frozen in air, frozen in time, <laughs> like a fountain when it freezes up. Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> like the matrix the camera swinging around from all angles oh my god ryan 14 oh hi hey adam just want to say you're my god thank you and drew you're cool too thank you ryan uh hey i just had a question i was wondering how would i uh get like into boxing like how you know just like a gym or something um a 14 year old where would he get into boxing yeah Where's he? Well, you just find a place uh, that Where does pa- it near you. Pasadena. What, uh, the, what's the place you used to work at in Pasadena? Well, I used to work at uh, Bodies in Motion, but I don't want to give those cheap bastards any plugs that barely <laughs> paid me anything. There you go. Well, here's the thing. Every uh, here, Here's uh, what I used to say uh, for years, and uh, now it's uh, come home to roost like everything I ever say and never do anything about, <laughs> which is I said 10... I was, I've been into boxing for like 20 years, and I said to myself... And said to everyone who would listen, like 10 or 15 years ago, why is it that there's a dojo on every corner? And I'm just speaking in terms of Los Angeles. It right. might, might be different regionally or around the country, but I'm sure it's not. In L.A., there is a dojo, some martial arts studios, and kung fu or, yeah. or karate on every, every corner, yeah. every block, five a block. And it used to be this way 15 years ago, yet... You couldn't box anywhere. When I started boxing, I had to drive downtown from uh, from the valley. I had to go into like East LA and go to this little crappy gym. Right. And I said, "Now, why is it that everybody knows 
who the heavyweight champion of the world is, who Muhammad Ali is, who all these great boxers are, that a prize fighter, if he's a heavyweight, is going to make $10 million for a big fight. Right. And name me the guy who's the karate champion of the world right. or the kickboxing champion of the world. And the, the kickboxing champion, what's he get? Thirty grand for a championship fight? Fifteen grand? Eighty grand? I mean, it's not $10 million. So why is this one sport so much bigger than the other, yet it doesn't get done on a sort of pedestrian level, and this other one is everywhere? Because that one... Now, here's what it is. Now it's switched around. It's coming around. There's all that executive boxing everywhere. Everyone's doing it. It's on Fox. But then it was sort of the, the hangover from the 60s. It's Eastern, it's good, it's Western, it's, it's yeah, bad. Yeah, we got brainwashed by all that yeah. kung Boxing, fu and Boxing all that is, crap. Is barbaric, Western, bad. Right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Blake, 17. Hello? Hey, Blake. Hey, what's up? Mm-hmm. You tell us. Um, well, my girlfriend's kind of weird, and um, my, pa- my dad's a pastor, mm. and I was wondering if it'd be cool if I introduced him or not. How long has she been your girlfriend? Uh, about six months, and she really wants me to. Like, yeah. we're pretty serious. All right, I think it's time. How old is she? She's 17, too. Uh, I'm about to turn 18, and she's like... Don't, isn't there some part of you that kind of wants your parents to see the tats and piercings and things that this girl Does has? she have that? Um, I, I think it would hurt my dad, though. Oh, she has all that? What do you mean? She, um, not really. She's, I don't know. She's really... I really like her, but I don't... Oh, think wait, wait a second. Does she have tats and piercings? Yeah, a lot. A whole lot? Uh-oh. Yeah. She just got a tattoo of a son on her ankle yesterday, and she's got them all over. Not her face or anything, but... Well, where are the piercings? Um, she's got one nipple pierced. She's got all over her ears, her nose. Her nose? Yeah, well, she's he, talking about, about getting her lip pierced next week. No. Uh, so she's got trouble, right? Yeah, she's and she wants, to, like, she wants to move to Mexico, actually, with her friend. At, at 16? Uh, no, she's 17. She's oh, 17. I beg your pardon. Oh, that's totally different. Good times. Well, sorry, she's almost 18. What part of Mexico does she want to move to? Uh, I don't even know. Are, are there different parts, Adam? What are you, what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> she hasn't thought of what? What? Nobody you're spoiling, you're spoiling her spoiling her to Mexico. Okay, listen. Blake? Yeah. Why don't well first off, don't get this chick pregnant. She's oh. trouble. Okay. She's she's a very troubled person. Believe but, you me. But clearly you're with her for a reason and part of that must be to assert some part of yourself to your parents. Okay. Here, here's your chance to do that now. Oh, he means payback time for Papa? Yeah, it's a little payback time for being an uptight pastor, and uh, you're going to show him who you are in no uncertain terms. And You're, you're into busting your dad's balls a little bit? Um, I don't, not really. Not really? I mean, I don't, I guess I sort of do a little, but I don't, he doesn't know that really. What if, uh, <laughs> no, we understand that he doesn't. feels it. <laughs> like, we don't get in a lot of arguments. Well, oh, what, I, know. I know, but you let, uh, you, you let your actions speak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what's the deal? Did he, uh, um, what did he do to you? Growing controlling. Up. I don't know. Super he controlling. Impressive. I don't really. I'm not really the same religion. I don't think. Yeah. Right, what are you? I don't know. But I don't really believe what he preaches. Sounds okay. True. Well, like, good. You're yeah. smart. He thinks, like he thinks that he doesn't even know really who she is. He knows I have a girlfriend, mm-hmm. and he keeps asking. He doesn't even know her name. Her name's Sarah, but she thinks. I mean, he thinks that her. She has a bunch of other names. You know, like yeah. there's a bunch of different girls. Yeah. It's really been the same girl the whole time. Yeah. yeah. When you get older, you can't remember anything, and you mispronounce everyone's name. I mean, that, that that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, so listen. Here's here's the deal. Um, ask her to take out her ta- her piercings. Okay. And then you know if she's got a tat on her ankle. Don't wear a skirt. Some of those piercings will close up fast. Like the nose can close up. Not if hours. it's been open for a while. Yeah, she's had them for a while. The I mean, one that knows can close up in hours. It can. Yeah, it can, but it's not. Please, Drew. Yeah. Listen, I still, I, you know I know more than you about everything, and you know I'm right, right? Always. Well, look, if you've had a nose piercing in for a couple of years, it's not going to close up in an hour. Not in an hour. Or mm-hmm. hours. Mm-hmm. No. It's, in a day, it's done. Really? Oh, yeah. One day. One day. I, we no. gotta have, have some piercing people call. And piercing people out. call. Yeah. Now, I'm talking about... My, my understanding about is that's done, and that it closes up really fast. Yeah, but not if you've had it. If you had, if you had it in your nose for for two years, I understand the point. You pulled making. it out overnight; it's not going to close up. Hey, Anne's coming in. Go ahead. I actually did have my nose pierced. Yeah, I remember and that. I had it for a year, and then it was closed by the following day, and I had to have it re-pierced. One day. One day. Yeah, absolutely. All right. It yeah. happens like four to six hours. Right? But um, Anne's nostril cartilage. Admit you wrong. Admit, wrong. Admit it. <laughs> 
But Anne has superhuman nostril cartilage. <laughs> I've always said that about her. You have. Yes, actually. I admit yes, I'm wrong. No, no, that, you said that. Is, that is amazing. Yes. That is absolutely amazing. I would think it would take uh, a week for that thing. But here's the thing. Even even if it takes, even if it is closed and you have to have it redone in 24 hours, all you got to do is meet the guy from 8 to 8.45 one evening. You could literally pop the thing out for two hours. You'll be fine. Yeah. And this is a couple years. Brittany is 16. Brittany? Yeah. Um, I've gone through, like, a few, like, mental and emotional stresses with my parents. A few. Um, I want to know if that has any bearing on the fact that I have a lot of S and M tendencies, and I'm pretty sadomasochistic. Yes, let's say yes. Somebody beat on you? Um, he's attacked me a couple of times. I retaliate. I'm not very weak, and I'm not very taken with the idea of being stepped on. So yeah, well, we didn't say any of that. We just no, said some. We have a lot of arguments. Ooh. But we said said somebody had just raised their hand to you and tried to hurt you. Growing up, you mean? Oh yeah. And that's what makes for this. That's I'm not makes... sure. Who attacked you growing up? Your dad? Yeah. Like, when I was seven, I um, had the urge, like, I was just so angry with him for being the way he was that I, I'm, mind you, I'm only seven, but I wanted to kill him at that point. Wow. Yeah. What was he, he was, what was he doing? Was he smacking he you? Loud and violent, and by the age of eight, I figured that the reason he was beating me just because he was angry that I wouldn't obey, like, it wasn't a disciplinary thing, he was wow. just angry. It just sounds awful, Brittany, but don't take this out on yourself. What's really interesting no, about... I don't want to, it's like, I don't want to kill myself or anything like that, and I... Yeah, but you'd rather somebody beat the crap out of you, and that's the only way you can feel no, sexual. No, 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 not, like, no. I'm actually pretty sensual. I don't have to have, like, something violent or, like, painful happen to me, you know, right. for pleasure. True, I don't think I said the word sensual. Well, until just right now. No, that's the first ever. time I said it. Except I heard it 400 times last night. I know, but <laughs> I screwed up chicks. I always used the word sensual. When you were uh, 16, did you know what sensual was, or did you care? No. Did, what else? They used another word like that last night. What was Kids it? are intelligent now. Erotic? No, no. No, yeah. and now they're just screwed up. <laughs> so screwed, jerk. screwed up with a thesaurus. I'm All right, baby. Well, cool. listen, you got to get some. You got to get some uh, therapy. I'm in therapy now. Okay, All right, good. Just, just don't, stick don't with that. Realize that these fetishes are there to act out some very primitive feelings, and that's why I've never like acted out on it like with anybody. I'm trying to think. Are you okay? Well, just hang in there. It, it, you know, it's, they're not bad. You don't feel guilty about it, but they, they're 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 really. expressions of what you've been through. And they aren't about real intimacy and real connection and real sexual experiences. It's about aggression and about the fact that you can't really have satisfaction because your brain chemistry is clouded by all that arousal. Now, this, by the way, is, uh, you know, people make fun of me for saying this, but or they may uh, have some opposition to this, but I want all screwed up parents to have girls. Mm. Because when when you beat on a girl, when you rape the girl, when you abuse a girl, all you get is strippers. Mm -hmm. And basically, chicks that like rough trade. And vampires now, too. And vampires to uh, come on to the show. Yeah. You beat on a guy growing up, and you get a guy who's beating on society. Yeah, violently. That's what I mean. Yeah, and I don't need that. Yeah. Then I'm affected. Christine, 19. No, that's enough, Drew. we got to take a break. We actually got three more minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, that thing, go reset that. It's driving me crazy. There's a clock on the wall that's like six, eight minutes ahead. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. No, look, this is the time. Oh, what happened? The cameraman knocked, knocked it off the wall yeah, the other night? Yep. Was it that way last night? Yep. Oh, I was just going off that clock last night? No. Nope. We're going off this one. No, I just break. I, you know, I break five minutes late all the time. Right. So you were going on time. Ooh. Very so, interesting. Maybe we got to leave the clock alone. Oh. Yeah. Oh, mama. Oh, I got stuff to talk about with clocks, too. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. Hey, I've got a question. Mm -hmm. I've just moved, like, across the country. Mm hmm and me and my boyfriend are going to try and stay together, and I wanted to know if y'all had, like, any suggestions to, you know, make it last. Where is he? He's in Mississippi, and I'm in Colorado. You going to college now? Yeah. I I'm really... A, I'm a junior in college, and so is he. And you just moved across the country? Yeah. And September will be two years mm -hmm. that we've been together. So, so, wait, let me ask the question again. Up until just recently, you were together in Mississippi. Yeah. Why did you move in the middle of your junior year? No, um, I went ahead and moved because I found a, a really awesome apartment. And in Denver? Yeah. Yeah, you know how it is. You're sitting in Mississippi. You're reading the Denver Dispatch. No. You see a nice uh, deal on a two-bedroom. Yeah, you got to move. Well, That's allowed. Um, you pick like, up and move. The college I'm going to had like a web page, and I found it off of that. And, and by the way, vice versa for the people who live in Denver. 
They read the uh, Mississippi Gazette. And if you're going to a school in Colorado, you'd be living in Mississippi, right? Okay. And anyone, 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 yeah, commute, commute sure. from Mississippi, right, of course. Sure. Anyone, anyone would know that. <laughs> Christine, makes you understand? Perfect sense. Nothing you're saying makes sense. Help us understand what's going on here. Okay. Um, I lived in Mississippi. And you went to I, school in Mississippi? Right. I've, I've got, I went to a junior college in Mississippi. Until when? Until, I, like, May. May of this year? Yeah. And so suddenly in the middle of your junior... Oh, and you, so you're going to start college next year? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to start on my junior year next year. All right, year. next year. And so you moved early. And yeah, I moved college. early because I found right. an apartment. All right, and your boyfriend, he's out of college in Mississippi? No, he's, he's still in college, but he's in Mississippi. Hold on, by the way, junior way. college in Mississippi sounds like something your <laughs> principal threatens you with when your grades are bad. <laughs> I like the way she responded to you. Your boyfriend's in college? No, no, no. He's in college, Miss. <laughs> son, son, you don't straighten up, fly right, bring those SATs up, and start studying. You'll be going to junior college in Mississippi. <laughs> Two below. <laughs> well, hey, when you have a, a two-year college offer you a free ride, you go. <laughs> yeah, but here's the, uh, the the irony is that they're all free those two-year colleges. So. <laughs> all right, here's the deal. Wait, it, you smoke weed, Christine? Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. What is that, Christine? Yeah. You smoke weed? No. What is that laugh? I'm easily amused. Okay. I didn't mean why the laughter. The quality of the laughter. Quality, I mean, that yes. weed quality. Okay. So um, right, here's the deal, Christine. It's usually not a good idea to try to maintain a relationship across the country, especially for college, because you're, you're going to college. Part of the experience is a social experience and exploring who you are and whatnot. You've moved away. Maybe it's time. You know, at 19, it's hard to know when a relationship is over, and it's hard to end them. And, you know, I understand you wanted to work out, but yeah. unless you really live in the same place, you end up keeping a big emotional piece of yourself tied up somewhere else when you should be invested in really re de developing a life where you are in Colorado. Yeah. She got a free ride to the junior college. Isn't that nice? As opposed to the uh, staggering sum of uh, $6 a unit, <laughs> what it cost uh, the other counties. <laughs> Saved yourself 78 bucks a year. That adds up. Well, that's uh, over two years. Well, good times. Not a calculator big enough to figure that one out, but you know what I'm saying, Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't all junior colleges free? I think she was talking about the Colorado part. She said a two year college. Two years of college. Uh, Do you want to ask? Yeah. She's still there. Yeah. yeah. I Christine? Yeah. What part was free? Like, I, I didn't have to pay to go to school. In junior college? Yeah. What about college? I'm not having to, I've got a free ride for college. Is that what you were talking about when you talked about the free ride? Yeah. Where are you going no. to college? I'm going to see you. Colorado University. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not satisfied that she still knows what we're what talking go about. Go Rams? Right. When, you, when you were saying, yeah, go Rams, right? Uh, Buffaloes. Buffaloes. Oh, wait a minute. Colorado State. Oh, really? Colorado State's Rams. Yeah. Hey, uh, Christine? Ooh, yeah. Why do you get to go uh, for free? I've got grants and scholarships. Okay, what for? You do anything? Um, yeah, well, I do band, and I've got good grades. You do band? Yeah. Well, what do you do? Do you play something? I play five different clarinets. Simultaneously? <laughs> one sticking out of your ass, one in each nostril. Wow, I, I get more confused than what we talked to Christine. A, I didn't know there were that kind of scholarships available. B, there's five, not, I, five I, different I, kinds of clarinets? No, they're kid. They can't oh, be. Oh, no, we have to talk to her more. Eventually, they, they become an oboe at a certain point. After three, it becomes an oboe. Christine, are there, are there five different types of clarinets? Yes. Name them all, please. Okay, the E-flat alto clarinet, E-flat soprano, B-flat soprano. It's my uh, favorite HBO series. <laughs> clarinets. E-flat bass and E-flat contra. Okay. See? And there's also an A-flat soprano. Yeah, but this you is You don't really, play that one, though. Yeah, actually, I do. Oh. But I'm not as good at that one. Uh, all right, but this is, all right, but this is like saying I play the trumpet and the flugelhorn. Yeah. That's like sort of the same thing, yeah, yeah. right? I still get her back one more time. I got one more question before we go to break. Christine? Yes. This is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. But when you were talking about having the uh, going to college for free, mm -hmm. weren't you, I know I'm leading you, but weren't you talking about your uh, Mississippi Junior College? Both. You're both. talking about both. both. All, right. All right. All right. That's a push. I'm not attracted at all to this woman. I don't trust a woman who can play, play five clarinets. This woman, she can't be good looking. You've usually been into women that are in the band. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Five different clarinets, everybody. Who knew? We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. And, uh, Drew, mm -hmm. we'll be right back after this. Hey, 
everybody. Love line. I'm uh, Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. <sighs> Monday, I'm getting my tooth pulled. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. It's nice. Nice. The dentist. They shouldn't get in any kind of detail. About you know, how it's it, going to go? Yeah, dentist should talk to you like. Uh, you know how you talk to your kid about uh, where his dog went when he yes, dies? Yes, That kind of talk. Yes, yes. I mean, no, he's, no he's, he's at a farm. We took him to a lovely farm. Right now he's running through acres and acres of green pastures. It's good pastures. It's great. It's great it's having a great time. He's eating, he's eating a T-bone human, steak every night. I think of the human impulse to, to protect people from reality. We really have that impulse in space, don't we? I, I love, I, but but it seems to stop. For me, it stopped about <laughs> about about nine years old. I wish people had kept with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Well, I, I mean, I, I you know they got this dentist telling me. Uh, I'm sort of forced to deal with you that way. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> here's how we'll take the tooth out. I'll just I'll break it into three pieces and uh, we'll take it out there. Uh, come on, you understand? It's in my mouth. It's going on in my mouth. You understand? That. But it's like it's like we're talking about a car quarter panel or something, right? Listen, I, I understand you. You pulling have your, out some wall. You have your your technique for taking the tooth out. That's fine. Let's not break it down. Right. You just do your job, buddy. And 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 again, again with the argument with the gas and the drugs and stuff. You don't need it. Oh. No, you could make it. Yeah, you could make it. Yeah, yeah you could do it. No, I want the nitrous. Yeah, I swear. To effing Christ. <laughs> I went to a guy who just did oral surgery. That's all. I got sent to a specialist because the first root canal was screwed up. And I said to the guy, get me the laughing gas. Oh, yeah. Get, get me the nitrous. And he's like, oh, we don't, we don't have that here. And I said, please, dear God, if not you, who? Who, if not you? All you do is oral surgery. You don't got the gas? Who then? Who, I ask you? You don't have it. No, no, we don't. We don't care. And all you do is oral surgery. Yeah, that's what we special. And still, no gas. Really? They have to do an anesthesia residency for you to do that. Oh, Jesus Christ. But yeah. God damn it. I mean, it's all you do is oral surgery. You can't have the... What they do is if you need that kind of thing, they'd see you at the hospital. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is so brutal. And like I said, the part where they try to talk you out of it. I think you could handle it. No, you don't need it. No, I'm pretty sure you could do it. Yeah, I could do it. Listen, it, remember, uh, you know, in, in Survivor, uh, Tom Hanks did it with a hockey skate. We could do that, too, if we were in a, on an island somewhere. But hmm. we got nitrous, baby. How about it? They, I don't like this whole challenging part. And as a guy, they try to, they, they, they try to uh, <clears throat> challenge your machismo a little bit. That's what. Oh, we got. Oh, I. We have girls. We have young girls in here. They do it without. Yeah, that's great. Little, <laughs> little girly men. <laughs> little, yeah, you know what? They could also do a back handspring off a off a balance beam. You know what? Not me. And look, I don't give an ass what they do. I want it. I want. I don't want to know you're doing it. You understand? It's not about could we make it. I don't want to know where I am. Huh. I hope. I. I want to be on some. You know cosmic rocket ship that has left the planet while you're breaking my tooth into three pieces nice. you screw balls oh we could do it all right yeah, we could do it oh, oh. i'm pre-miserable for this drew pre-miserable Thank you, for you hear me making me miserable as well Thank but what you. is it with that crap oh. we, we could do it you could make it i'm sure you could make it what is that just give me what you got you got it let's do it josh yeah what's up he's 21 I, um, I was wondering how Adam can tell if someone's a virgin or not just by talking to him on the phone. What do you think about Josh? Well, it's interesting. He's sort of on the cusp, isn't he? Yeah, he's on the cusp, but the fact that he called and wanted to know is the part that's... Uh, Intriguing. Might tip it a little bit. Yeah. Josh? Yeah? Keep speaking, please. What, what is it you've noticed about Adam when he does that magic trick? What do you uh, notice in people's voices, let's put it that way, when, when he's able to identify it? I, I really don't know. I've been trying to. I've listened to the show for a while, and I've I've been thinking about it, but I can't put my finger on it. There's a certain confidence in a tone that change. It, the, a, a man's voice changes when he's been laid. Josh is not a virgin. But he's, he's close. He's, he's close. Yeah, it's strange. Josh, are you gay? No, I'm not. Hmm. 
Uh, but I, I am a virgin, but when I tell people that, they don't believe me, is, and so that's kind of why... Yeah, no, I, would, I, I, I learned I, how you could tell. What, I, would, what, I would believe it if I were them. I would believe it, but, what, but he's done something. What do you mean? Oh, he's got the third base? Josh? Uh, no, I haven't. You've never done anything? Well, I'm not third base, no. What's third base? Yeah. Anal. That it's, would be like uh, digital sex. Yeah. You know, fondling, that sort of thing. Now, I, I think third is oral now, isn't it? Well, I was I just thought, well, I haven't done that either, so. All okay. Right. Josh, what, I mean, uh, Drew, what much makes you think Josh has done something? I just, I, I don't see, I don't hear the hardcore virgin quality. That, that, oh, I, I, I'm not the one that picks this one up, by the way. You're the one that. Oh, really? Uh, I, I, I know it when you point it out, but I'm not good at it. He sounds a little shaky to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, what are you, you're from Utah? What, are you Mormon? Yeah, I am from Utah. I'm not Mormon, though. Oh, okay. What's uh, holding you back from the sex? Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a little overweight, so... What are you coming in at? 3'10". Uh, 3'10"? Ten. Three ten? How tall are you? Uh, six foot. All right. That's not bad. No. And uh, how about losing some weight so you can get laid? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it, but... Okay. You know... You're going to lose about a... You have to lose 100 pounds, Josh. I mean, this is not a... You can't just kind of work on it. You have to really put your mind to it, get a dietitian, get a program going, to exercise. That's yeah. A, I was just... Is there anything specific that you can... That when they talk to you, is it the tone of their voice or... Josh, are you writing a paper on virgins or are you trying to get laid yourself, God damn it? Oh, I just... I'm just curious as to how, you, how you're able to do it all the time. I, I, listen, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just hear it. We, we hear all we do is sit here and listen to voices all night, right. and we pick stuff up that we almost can't even explain. So, Josh, okay. it's like okay. walking the way somebody walks or the way they look at you. You can, you can sense things about who the person is. But you here's process that. here's the thing, and everyone should know this about this show is when somebody calls, we don't think in advance. Right. Was this person abused? Is this person a virgin? Right. We don't think about any of that in, we, in advance. We hear their voice. We react. And it, we react to it, right. Yeah. Josh? Yeah? How about uh, how about losing the weight, though, buddy? I, that's I don't more, understand Yeah, this. that's the most important thing for you, your health, your emotional well-being, everything. I, I know. I know about that. Yeah, but you're kind of blowing right. it off. Every time you bring it up, yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I'm kind of... Yeah, yeah what are you doing? I, I just go to school and I work. I don't really... I'm not too social, I guess. I don't know. What are you doing you to... That? The nerd patrol or whatever you were calling it last night. Calling all nerds, yeah. The nerd alert. Well, what are you doing to lose the weight? Uh, I have been uh, going to the gym for an hour every day. Okay. Up at the, up at the college where I go. So. Yeah, that's, that's the start. Good. What are you doing to diet? Are you dieting? Uh, not really. All right, your weight's not coming off uh, until you make a very serious effort. And it may even then, it, it, you know, it's you may require more help than just that. But you have to put your mind to this. Yeah, and listen, it's a, it's a tough road to hoe for uh, husky guys to get laid. And by the way, um, once you uh, pass three bills, you've also passed husky. Yeah, Very and you're, well, 100 pounds of weight defines obesity. It does. And that, that is requ- you know, your health is, is in danger by this. It's really important to you, not, not only is the fact that you can't get a relationship, you isolate. There's more going on here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he plays video games. He goes to college. He's got a gig. He's got a few friends. What's he need the chicks for? Uh, Mike? Yeah. You're 25? Yeah. Um, actually, my question is about ecstasy. Um, we hear, or I've said, I've read a lot of stuff on, like, on the internet about preloading and protection from, like, certain of the damage done by ecstasy, like um, antioxidants, vitamin C, um, use of, like, 5-HTP, stuff like that. I'm wondering... There's absolutely you know, no scientific evidence, really, that any of that works. There's none. Um, it really has not been substantiated. Any, anything you're reading is is spurious at best at this stage. Uh, and this is because it's like what they've done with humans, or because it, it's a it's a listen. It's a brain toxin. There, there are all kinds of toxins that are there that mediate their damaging effects, possibly through free radicals and things like that. And so far, like for instance, people want to take milk thistle to help deliver from alcoholic liver damage mediated through free radicals. Well, there's no evidence that does a damn thing. Milk thistle does probably clean up some free radicals, but there's no evidence it does anything in terms of preventing liver damage. Same thing is true of these things in, in the ecstasy brain damage. Well, what about the argument, and I'm, I guess it's your argument, Drew, or it's not your argument, but the, the argument that if, if you sort of nullified the stuff, it wouldn't really work. 
Well, that's that's a different thing. If you're doing things that prevent its effect, but this is not that. They're claiming they can somehow alter some of the mechanisms that mediate the damage to the brain, and there's just no evidence for that. It's like saying, I'm going to take this poison, and if I preload with some vitamin D and some vitamin A and some vitamin C and some antioxidants, right. the poison won't be so bad for me. Well, no. Damn. Drew, is it... Uh is it sort of true the more that we find out everything just turns out uh, to be sort of hereditary and uh, luck of the uh, cosmic wheel? In terms of spin. what? Just, you know, you, you drop some X, it turns you into a retard or has no effect. <laughs> you're, 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 you know, you're 21 years old, you're 310 pounds. Mm. Do you, you know what I mean? I mean, to me, the, the weight thing uh, sums it all up with life mm -hmm. which is <clears throat> the guy's the guy's 21 he's 310 pounds i i work with a guy who's uh, you know 28 130 pounds and he I, forces himself to like drink milkshakes because he can't uh, can't keep the weight on right. you know right. it, is what why, why why do we want to punish one guy and uh, praise the other mm -hmm. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and isn't it just the same with most all this stuff? I mean, sure, yes, yeah, steady diet of booze and cigarettes and X is going to screw you up. But all things just sort of, quote, unquote, a normal life. And don't your genes just kind of sort everything out? It's as, huge, as opposed huge. to when you're going to have your heart attack and what color your eyes are and how fat you're going to be and how tall your kids are going to be. And don't we spend a little too much time trying to change that with vitamin E oil? And uh, mm -hmm. a glass of red wine mm -hmm. a day. Oh, friend or foe. Friend or foe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been hearing this goddamn glass of red wine a day argument going back and forth and back and forth like uh, a badminton game right. for the last 20 years. Right. Does it just not seem to matter, really? Really, probably. And doesn't almost nothing really seem to matter? I mean, a little exercise. Don't overdo it exercise, with anything. Right. That's about it. You know, an aspirin a day may decrease the you know, heart attack occurs when a clot forms in the vessel. So you push that probability equation away from a clot formation. So maybe you don't get your heart attack as early. Right. But that if you're happen. a guy who's who has high cholesterol, then that's it. No, I mean, you're they, prone to it. Yeah. They, oh, yeah. And if you're a guy who doesn't have high cholesterol, you eat whatever you want. That's it, too. But not, I mean, more or less. Okay. It's a big piece of it. I'm just saying... The, the biggest secret in this society, as far as I can tell, is everything seems to be sort of genetic and and sort of almost preordained. And we spend our time uh, listening to cassettes and reading books and dieting and trying to do a whole bunch of stuff and never doing anything. Mm. All right? Mm. You're right. Always. I mean, look, here's what I want to say. You and I and uh, producer Ann and everyone in this uh, building always talking about, oh, I'm eating too much or I got to start dieting, yeah. I got to start exercising. You are exactly the same size, Anne is exactly the same size, and I'm exactly the same size as we all were eight years ago when I met everybody. <laughs> so who are we kidding here? The next eight are going to be different? Oh, I guess we're going to talk about it, though. That's right. We've got to talk about it. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. And we'll talk. Drew, let's meet you and Anne talk <laughs> about diet and exercise, and we'll meet back here in eight years and see if we're exactly the same. Okay? After this. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Let me tell everyone about the clock real quick. Because here's what you all have to do. Took me many, many years Should to I figure fix this, this out. Yes, Drew, fix, fix that clock. And, and listen to my uh, sage-like words as you've correctly set the clock. Everyone's got their own technique with the clock. Some people like it uh, five minutes behind. Other people set it, you know, 12 minutes ahead. They try to fool themselves. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. It's distracting, by the way. You should announce it when uh, you go to someone's house or you get in their car. You know, there's people, most people I know like to put their clock between 4 and 12 minutes ahead. Mm -hmm. They feel it keeps them on time. But they well, should have to declare that when you step in the car? Screws me up. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. in the car and I'm like... Holy Christ, it's, it's uh, 9.48, the movie starts at 10. When I, and then, no, 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 that's 14 minutes. Uh, I mean, after all, it does say, you know, objects are closer than they appear. <laughs> yeah. There should be a you know, clock they, set they four should, minutes ahead of standard time. They, I do it in people's house all the time. I do it all the time. And, and, and people like it that way because they believe it fools them right. into getting places. But here's why it doesn't work. They know. I know. If the clock fairy came in and magically set it forward 14 minutes while they were asleep, then maybe that day... 
they'd be at work on time. But if you intentionally set it forward 10 minutes and you know you did it and you compensate for it, then how does that work? Please. I mean, (laughs) who are you kidding? Why don't you just change your scale? Right. Drop a. Drop. Here's what you should do. Everyone should add 50 pounds to their scale so when they get on, what? I'm no longer 190. I'm 240. I got a diet. But if you know it, then who are you kidding? Right. All right. Here's what everyone has to do with their clock. And the day, the day you do this, the day uh, you've, uh, you, this is called, this, uh, you're on the road to self-actualization. Hmm. Set your clock to exactly the time it is. Exactly. List, call time up. And set it when it, right when the uh, at the tone the time will be straight up, boom, straight up. Yep. So every clock in the house is that way. And whenever you look at it, it is exactly not a second one way or the other. That that is the best way to go through life. Actually, I realized what I do. I put the clock about two minutes ahead, so people don't really notice that it's not the real time. Right. So you can push people along two minutes. Yeah, people have a range about yeah. three. Yeah, between two and uh, not over they, five. They even claim it's the real time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, but even you end up screwing up because in your head it goes down as this clock is fast. No, I know it's the right time. I, that's what I'm saying. I, I know it's two minutes fast, but yeah, I get but, everybody else to go uh, along with this real time. But it screws you up personally, Drew, because in your head it goes down as this clock is fast. Yes. When the reality is it's a minute and 43 seconds no, fast. Mm-hmm. What? That's how many minutes I'm... You're right. Sometimes I do think, oh, maybe it's five minutes past. Yeah. yeah. You see, it's going down yeah. in your head as the clock yeah. is fast. You're right. That's why it you're doesn't right. help. That's why you set it to exactly whatever the time is, yeah. and that's it. It doesn't go... You look at it, and that's what it is. Oh, what did I tell you about this flight I had on the way out to New York? What happened? I got up late. Was I telling you about that? No. Oh, my God, did I get up late. Whew. I got up amazingly late. Yeah. Um, I'm late. I'm I'm late. I'm I'm break. I'll tell you. All right. Joe, 23. Hey, what's going on? What's up? Um, well, uh, I didn't think I'd get through. I'm kind of nervous. Um, okay. All right. I know that I'm gay. You're gay. <laughs> yeah. True. He knows he's gay. I'm just corroborating his... True. He admitted He admitted he was gay. You're gay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We get it. <laughs> well, um, I'm not comfortable with myself. It's taken me a while to, you know... Except who I am. You're gay. <laughs> Ooh, we. Go ahead. He's saying he's gay. Yes, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> you, you guys are cracking me up. Um, well, like, I just have, first of all, I'm a shy person, and I have a hard time meeting people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, You're a lesbian. Um, oh, what's that? Drew, he's not a lesbian. <laughs> I'm sorry. Drew's got going nuts on the mic, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Um, I have Ooh. a hard time meeting people and stuff like that, and... Right. Um, well, first of all, I don't I, I don't know what my problem is. It's just like I don't I don't even like that much gay sex. You have a small penis, you fag. True, true. That was me. That was you. You guys. What do you mean? Horrible. That is you. You guys are so horrible. All right, listen. I I don't understand. You want to know how to meet men? You want to? He doesn't like gay sex, but he's gay. You want to know how to what? Be clearer, come more comfortable with yourself and your choice. Not your choices. Your orientation. Well, I guess I just. I I need to I, I don't know what I, I need to I, I don't know I need to like um I I guess I need more exposure but it's just like a lot of gay people really kind of turn me off too uh, yeah and like you know they're pain in the ass have you case. ever been with a male oh yeah you have yeah and that was an okay experience yeah it was it was it was great okay. you're gay I thought True. you said you weren't we in, into the gay sex. What was that? You said you're not really into gay sex. Well, um, for example, oral sex or anal sex, I don't do any of that stuff. Well, like, you... I just really like a lot of body contact and making out and, you know, massaging and stuff like that with yeah. a guy. Okay. Yeah. All right, it... all right, look, just get on the internet. <laughs> I oh. don't know. Where, where do the gays, what do the gays mean? Well, he hasn't asked us that question. He wants to meet guys. No, oh, he's, he's he, wants to, he wants to know how to be more comfortable in his own skin, it sounds like. <sighs> Isn't that basically it, Joe? What's that? You want to know how to be more comfortable in your own skin, right? Yeah, that. And it's just like, I don't know, how come I don't like oral sex? I don't, is it because I'm not comfortable with myself? So I, We don't know. And I don't think, if you don't know, you can't give us any hints, we're not going to be able to figure it out. But if you're really interested in that, if you're unsettled by the way things are sort of going for you, go get some therapy. I, it's, it sounds like, though, you really kind of person would probably be into monogamy. What turned you gay, son? What turned? 
turn me gay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't think... Son, you can be honest with me. I don't know if anything in particular turned me gay. I think I was just, you know, born I think though. a lot of gay people are just born gay. Yeah, a lot of okay. guys are. Fair amount. That's right. Okay, so no molestation or weirdness or uh, over-domineering mom? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, my mom, I am a mama's boy. Um, my When I was a kid, like, you know, there was this other neighborhood kid that was kind of sexually abusive. Oh. But, but I don't know if it's had that much of an impact on me. I don't know if it's... No, this must life. have been none. That's why Adam brought this up. I'm just two up. for two. Yeah. <laughs> all right, listen. All right, Joe. Look, I, therapy, you're 23. You're a little confused. That's fine. Don't freak yourself out. Just give yourself time. And, and get some therapy. And I, I know it seems like a bitch, and maybe I'm just being Pollyanna, but what I mean is... is Obviously, you're confused. The, the, let yeah. the let the snow globe settle. Yeah. Just don't make a commitment either way. You don't have to blow any guys. You sounds don't like have to he's, do he's anything. He's into monogamy, just, too. Which yeah, is it sounds like a good guy. Yeah. Just relax. Do a little therapy. Find yourself, and you'll be fine. There you go. All right. We'll be back. Hey, yo. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. So, you're going to tell me about the trip to New York. The late wake. Yeah. This is great. I, uh, I had, uh, so uh, a week ago, I was uh, leaving to New York, and um, you know the good, why we should move to New York? Remember I was talking the other night about everyone begging you to move to New York? Yes, yes. The time difference on your side. Right. On your side, you're always traveling against the clock. Mm-hmm. When you're going across country, yeah, yeah. We do the radio show, get home twelve thirty, go to bed at one thirty-two, and you got to make a seven o'clock flight. That means you got to get up at five fifteen, and then when you get to New York, by the time you fight traffic and get into Manhattan, it's hey, it's time o'clock. to time to yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you're going there for, yeah. Now it's time to do it. Yeah, it always drives me nuts. But I always tell the car. Listen, don't ring, don't ring my buzzer. Don't ring my gate buzzer because uh, the drivers like to show up. If, you tell them, if they think they're showing up at 5.15 to come get you to make a 7 o'clock flight. They'll let you know they're there at 5. Yeah, they might. Ten, five the, minutes to 5. 5 maybe. to 5, yeah. they start ringing on the buzzer. Yeah. They don't realize I'm asleep until 5.14. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I always instruct the guy, do not ring the buzzer. And I've also instructed the guys that if and you ring the buzzer, I ain't coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm threatening the drivers, but so the guy doesn't ring the buzzer and my alarm goes off and I'm like in such a crazed, I slap it. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I mean, this never happens with me, but I go to bed at two, I take a sleeping pill, I go to bed at two o'clock, the thing goes off at like 5.15, it's, it's pitch black outside and my yeah. hand just flies across and whacks the thing right. and I'm, I'm gone. Right. And I start hearing the buzzer. Ooh. And I think to myself, first thought was, I thought I told those uh, sons of bitches not to ring my buzzer. I'm not going out. And then I look at the clock, and it's uh, 6.02. And I have, it's a 7 a.m. flight. Ooh. And it's not a 7.05 flight. It's 7. And it ain't Burbank. It's LAX, baby. And I'm a good 35, 40 minutes away. And it is 6.02, and I have an erection, and I'm in my underpants. And I'm, I'm about three quarters packed, but I'm going to be gone for a week, and it's dark outside. Oh, my God. And I just pop up sweating. I yell out my bathroom window at the guy. I'll be right down. And now I got that crazy, crazy manic thing going on. Underpants. It's so uncomfortable. Oh, it's the worst. Like, just, you yeah, know, you shave five years off your life. <laughs> Disoriented. Taking, you know, making decisions. Now, yeah. now here's the deal. You ain't getting everything into that bag of at this not. point. You you want it, but you don't want to forget your wallet. You don't want to forget a couple of right. a couple of key items, right? Right. You start sliding stuff off the counter, stuff stuff into the bag, just shoving stuff down, grabbing stuff. What's it, running around, uh, sweating profusely about the uh, forehead, and neck, you know, grabbing stuff. Run out the car, jump in the car. It is six oh eight as I pile into the car. Not bad. I made yeah, it made it good. from a sleep. To in the guy's car in about six minutes. And 25% more packed. <laughs> that, that, that's right. 
And I tell the guy, listen, no effing around. You got to hit it. Made the 7 o'clock flight. Made it. Did you jump ahead of the... What, what airline? Uh, uh, American. Really? Yeah. Made the... Uh, God, there are such pains in the ass on the, on the, the, the ticket counter. Made the flight. Wow. Not, not the ticket counter. Really, the, the ground crew at the gate. Well, you know what I did is uh, I was going to hit the first class check-in. Yeah. But there was 19 people in line. Oh. So I just went straight through security because I had my itinerary. Uh. Had an e-ticket. Went right on through. Made it to the gate, and I was like, yeah, all right, come on board. Did anyone know it's funny? I uh, get to uh, get to the room in uh, New York. I unpack my bag, and right at the top of the bag, first thing I pull out is a uh, white pair of underpants with a huge skid mark on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I packed my... Uh, I packed my crap underpants. I packed like a novelty, filthy, white pair of underpants was right at the a, top of the bag. Was that just when you woke up and saw that time was you crapped your pants? Or was that... That was me just grabbing for stuff <laughs> as I was running down the stairs and stuffing it into my bag, thinking I'm going to need this. <laughs> hey, listen, if I'd had a cat or a small dog, it would have been suffocated in that bag. Like, uh-huh. I'm lucky I didn't find like a toaster up in there. I was just randomly grabbing stuff like candles and CDs and just a dirty underpants, one tennis shoe, a slipper, no. graduation cap and gown. We, we I'm also, just stuffing stuff into, into my bag as I good, ran down the stairs. A good plane? 767. Seven. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So you could sleep. Yeah. Owen? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, my question is about an over-the-counter allergy medicine called Codicin. Um Doctor, I don't know if you've heard of this, but a couple mean, of my friends... You mean Coracidin? Could be Coracidin, yeah. Uh-huh. It's and Anyways, a couple of my friends have been... Uh, they started about a month ago, or maybe a month and a half ago, and uh, if you take a bunch of it, you have like a minor overdose, and uh, it's just supposed to be like being really drunk. I mean, I've never tried it, but... Um, well, it, it, they're, I don't know what they're using, but there are various cold preparations out there that can intoxicate you or give you even hallucinogenic experiences or deliriums. Not good things. Well, that's, that's my question is basically the, the situation that I'm in is, um, is my friends, it's two brothers, and their parents uh, are a little, uh, a little overprotective, mm-hmm. even a little crazy, so, and they got, they got in trouble for it once. Um, and they were they were on complete lockdown for like two weeks, and then they've slowly been let out of the house again. And the only I, I know that one of my friends has tried it has done it again once since then. Even though I mean he he said he was going to stop doing it all that stuff. I know he tried it once again. I assume from that that he's tried it more than that. I mean, uh, what's your I, question? My question is 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 it worth it to tell? Should I tell his parents? Should I talk to him about it? Should I do nothing? Because, I mean, I don't want him to, to damage his brain, but at the same no. time, if I if I were to just tell his parents about it, I mean, they might they might hurt him. Talk to your friend about it. The, 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 if, if it's coracidin, I believe there's a stimulant in there that has sort of ephedra like effects, and you can get strokes and heart rhythm disturbances and things from those. What do you mean they might hurt him? Well, they, I mean, just they. Uh, his, his dad's a cop, and his dad's he's on the SWAT team, and he's real. He's just really a really intense guy. And uh, I mean, he he's threatened him that if he ever started again, you know, just he's made some some uh, some threats and stuff. So I don't want to. I just don't want to uh, to basically have do something that's going to really hurt their family or, or cause their dad right. to hurt one of my friends. Well, why are you involved in, even at all with this? Is this is you well know because I mean? I'm, I'm really worried. I mean, I'm really worried about my friends. These guys are like my like brothers to me almost. Can you man. tell someone at school to get some help for you to help? With well, these I I they go they still go to high school. I used to go to high school with them, but I've graduated. And now, uh, now I'm in college, but I still I'm home for the summer, and I and I'm I'm getting all this. I was getting it first over the phone. And now uh, I've been home, and we've been we've been hanging out again, and uh, and I saw my friend doing it again. I thought it was it was over and done with, and and we could just move. Uh-huh. All right, well, he's, uh, I, I kind of like Owen, but there's a part of me that worries that he's a little too involved. Oh yeah, yeah, a yeah. little into the drama side oh, of this yeah. whole thing. Oh yeah, look, Owen, your friends. Addicts do this kind of thing. Addicts keep going back and insisting on using things that are damaging and dangerous and whatnot. And th- this is not the only thing they're going to use. They're going to use things that are more addictive and more arousing as time goes along here. If you want to help them with that, get them to a meeting. All right. so that's about all you can do. All you right. yourself can go to a codependency Talk meeting. Talk to them about it. Tell them Drew said it was screwing them up. And then they go to a meeting. He can go to a codependency meeting for his friend. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he needs it, right? Uh, Al a friend? No, Al 
Jesus Christ, for your friends? Mm-hmm. You know, I'd still be in those meetings right now if I went uh, to those you meetings know. for my screwed up friends. I think it was better you'd be. If I'd went to those you meetings? Wouldn't, you wouldn't have been crapped on and peed on. And... Well, I'd, I'd dished out a little fecal punishment myself, Drew. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I always, didn't always have the bullseye on me. You know what I'm saying, oh. buddy? Yeah. Yeah, I'll trade you. You, you pee on me, I pee on you. That's the way I work. That's Cor- the way the Corollas work. <laughs> it's the code of the Corollas. Cynthia. Yeah? 13. Yeah. Well, I just have a question. Um, well, I'm an eighth grade. I'm going to be a freshman. But the thing is, I'm, I'm not getting my high school, uh, my junior high diploma. And I want to know if it's, like, going to affect me during, like, those years <coughs> in high school. Like, if I want to go to college, do I need my junior high diploma? You, do they have a junior high diploma? Well, I'm not, I'm not getting my junior high diploma. How do you get into high school without know, but, graduating? Well, hold on a second. First, I want to know if they have one. No, I've it? never heard of such a thing. Because uh, if, that, if, if that's the case, I didn't get one and neither did Drew. Didn't affect me. Adam pretty, had a pretty tough time because of it. <laughs> I didn't get my high school diploma. I mean, physically. No one asked to see it, though. So it's fine. Daya, how do you get into high school if you don't graduate junior high? Um, they just ask, like, your parents if they want to pass you. And that's what they did to my mom. They asked her if I, like, she'll pass me, and she said, yeah. Well, the thing is, like, I thought you couldn't go to, like, to a college without your junior high diploma. No. You think Cynthia's on the fast track to college? Yeah. Cynthia, what, what are you worried about college for? That's not for you, baby. Uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, because, like, I have a bad record already. Yeah. With, with what? Well, um, I didn't get my diploma because um, I got drunk mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago, and you know I'm scared. Jesus. About that. Ah, well, so you got a lot of pressure in the eighth grade. You want to unwind, you know, crack a few beers, and the is man your, comes your, down on you. Is your family intact? Your parents are they still together? Oh uh, no, no, I live with my mom. And what's going on in that home with your mom? Oh, it's like problems. Like my mom thinks I'm not a virgin. And, you know, she thinks I'm, like, around with guys and stuff like that. Is your mom drinking? Uh, no. Doing drugs? No. Are you running around with guys? Uh, no. no. You no good you're, hooligan! You're a, uh, you're a virgin? Yeah. All right, Cynthia. Let me do some talking at you for just one second, all right, sweet pea? Okay. As you know, I'm a genius. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't listen to anything Drew says because he's the man. <laughs> he's a white guy. Okay, first off white okay he's got blue eyes and he went to uh, a private school yeah uh-huh. yeah but not me not big a <laughs> i got brown eyes you know what i'm saying sister yeah and i know what it's like out on the street uh-huh. now you ain't college material <laughs> that's fine you might not even be junior college material although i've not met that person yet but <laughs> you may be the first person i met who might not cut it in junior college and there are people look at that as a put down, but that's not a put down. That's being realistic. That's not your thing. School. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're not a good student. This I is was, what you wish someone had said to you, right? I wish someone had pulled me aside and said, Who are you kidding? Are you high? You failed driver's ed. You're ceramics major. You're not going to college. You told me last night that you didn't really fail driver's ed. <laughs> you, just, you got screwed by the man. I got screwed by the man, but I technically failed driver's ed. I failed biology. I never took bi- algebra. I was a ceramics major. I was a horrible student. Somebody should have, someone should have put a uh, set of tool bags on me when I was uh, 15 and taught me a goddamn trade so I wouldn't have had to clean carpets when I got out of high school for six bucks an hour. Also, you didn't have to have your self-esteem beaten down. Yeah, do you know what it's like to just fail at something your whole life? Just be miserable? I mean, you just suck at everything? I thought I was stupid. Of course you think you're stupid. You get a D, an F. What do other kids say? You don't think you're stupid? So you sitting behind you when it comes to take a test, looking over your shoulder. Are you kidding? You're stupid. Cynthia, Uh you got to find out what you like to do. What do you like to do besides uh, drink beer and defy your mother? Um, I like to play sports, basketball. All right, there you go. You're going to be a professional basketball player. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wish I could. Okay, no, here's, here's what you got to do. Do you like, you like, 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 let me say something. You like working on hair, nails, you know, that well, kind I mean, of stuff. Well, I start with the basketball passion. Maybe, you know, maybe she'll find something. Yeah, but that's school related. Yeah. Cosmetology, that's your thing, baby. <laughs> uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pushing yeah. out blackheads, pushing back cuticles, doing a lot of pushing. <laughs> Pushing up, pushing out. <laughs> pushing up, pushing out. 
Now, look, here's what you got to do. You cannot get pregnant. Very important. You cannot have unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Yeah. You cannot do that. You're going to be vulnerable for this. There's a lot of guys that are looking. Looking. You're you're calling from Bakersfield, right? Oh uh, yeah. She places, should, get out, should she get out of there? Places. Yes. It's, it, the Bakersfield is uh, nothing but uh, pedophiles and the criminally insane. <laughs> <laughs> it says it on the sign when you enter. <laughs> Welcome pedophiles and criminally insane. <laughs> Welcome pedophiles and criti and the criminally insane. So be careful with the fellas over there. Do not get yourself pregnant. S mm -hmm. Stay in school for now. Go off to high school. Do your best, but start thinking about a trade. Maybe working on some computers. Maybe uh, learning about learning a trade. You it's know, you understand do like. what it's I'm it's saying? Something you enjoy. Yeah. There, there, and then you'll you're, you're going to make money. That's what you got to do. Forget about college. <laughs> okay. All right. Meanwhile, go off. Don't worry about your uh, don't don't worry about your uh, grades from junior high. That's not going to bother anybody. Okay. And you, you start looking into getting into these schools that uh, take a year or two and get you uh, get you a degree in something like uh, computers or something and like that. And I think that. It's, it's worth saying that people don't make enough of the fact that one's emotional condition can affect cognitive development, intellectual development. That if you're depressed, if you are over, you're having incredibly stressful experiences at home, it affects your, your ability to perform at school. Oh yeah, you're, 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 parts of you are tied up. I mean, your whole neurologic, your brain energy is devoted to something else, surviving basically. But the the part that really makes you bad at uh, school is is being stupid, like I was. Yeah, but the point being is that if she gets some of that emotional stuff taken care of, some people people start right. doing well. She move up to a D. Yeah. Oh look, I uh, I don't want to put too fine a point on this, but we really to treat everybody especially in public schools to basically say look uh we're going to treat you all as if you're going to college but really only 30 percent of you are going to college is doing an injustice to the other 70 percent who really then have nothing to do i mean it was it was like it was big encouragement you know oh stay in school no finish high school no get that diploma half my friends got their diploma and the other half didn't you know the difference after high school graduation was is the ones that didn't get their diploma had a job hmm. and then the ones that did get their diploma had to start looking for a job hmm. and what's a high school diploma get you job wise i mean it gets you nothing yeah and we just started cleaning carpets and everyone got into construction didn't do anything somebody really should have just pulled us aside and said look you you ain't college material son and even if you were Please, your goof, goofball family they ain't paying for anything. You're not going to college. You be a plumber, be an electrician. You get into a trade. You be a, be an apprentice by the time you graduate at 18 years. You have like two years under your belt. Let's right. say maybe three years. Mm -hmm. Then you get in the union. You get you're an apprentice. You start off at 13.75 an hour with some dental benefits mm -hmm. instead of uh, you know cleaning carpets or digging ditches for six bucks an hour for some a holes. Why don't we do that? Why don't we just admit that? I blame you, Drew. I'm trying to get everyone into college. And what the hell good does it do if everyone has a college degree? Doesn't that become meaningless at a certain point? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone has one. Now what? Okay. Is that clock right? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> we need to take a break. Mike? Yeah. You're uh, 24? Yes, sir. What's up? Well, I had a vasectomy go bad. They uh, didn't tie off a... Uh a vein I'm guessing and I uh, bled down to about the size of a volleyball and wow. they, had to, they had to go back and remove 500 cc's of blood clot wow and now How much I is have 500 cc's sure I have Personal. absolutely okay. no good, right? sensation in my scrotum at all no sensation anywhere on the, either side of the scrotum right <laughs> and it was just my left side that uh that had ballooned up <laughs> does the penis work normally uh, yeah now Right now, yeah. Not this well, second, not right at this second. I see. I could though. All okay, right, that's good. don't threaten us with your penis. All right, all right, all right. All right. So what about it? Well, you've had some nerve damage to the cutaneous nerve, something that supplies the sensation to the skin, and it must have been stretched or damaged in some way. Maybe it come back. How long ago did this happen? Um, about three weeks ago. Oh, it'll. I bet you'll come back. Okay. It'll take quite some time, but it will come back. The cutaneous cuticle. Skin, mean, skin, come breaking out to the skin, coming to the surface. Surface. What's cuticle mean then? Come in dictionary. No, no, no. Come on, no. Come on. <laughs> <sighs> Drew, 
the dictionary. Let's take a break. You, you look up cuticle. I'm ready. I mean, I know what it is, but I'm just kind of curious what the uh, origins of that is. All right? All take right. a break. You look that up. All right. We'll get the answer to uh, cuticle when we come back. Got it right here. Are you too fast? After this. Hey, yo. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LVE 19. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Coming to you all night, every night. Super Friday and Saturday. Two hours, babe, out there. Today it's two hours. We like to say it's two hours. It feels like 90 minutes. <laughs> Maybe 95 to 100 minutes. But it definitely don't feel like two hours. Right, Drew? It feels like 60 minutes. No. Said less than that? Yeah. What's up there, Drew? Cutaneous, of or pertaining to the skin. So, cuticle. From the word cutis, cuticle, on the other hand. Cuticle. Mm Mm-hmm. You guys know what a cuticle is? Yeah, that, uh, it's not an, you, our goofball listeners. It's an external investment secreted usually by epidermis cells, the outermost layer of animal integument. I, I, but l- listen, let me just let me just straighten it, our listeners out for a second. And that didn't make sense, what you just said, <laughs> did it, Drew? I'm just reading it. Your cuticle, for our young dude listeners, is the uh, little, like, clear skin that's uh, right at the edge of your fingernail, right where your fingernail meets your finger. Chicks push it around a lot. They even have cuticle sticks. You mm. know that, Drew? Mm-hmm. And women, they push their cuticles back because they think that's going to make a difference. Mm-hmm. It's like you're at a club and you got your choice between the chick with the fat ass and the ones with the cuticle push. <laughs> Who do you go with, Drew? Quick. A cuticle. Quick. Cuticle. Of course. Of course, cuticle. cuticle. Yeah. Of course, cuticle. You, let, you broad spend billions of dollars on your nails each year, and us guys, we don't even know. They don't even know what it is. I don't even look down. We don't get past the boobs. We just don't. You're painting them. You're airbrushing them. You got the uh, French uh, French style manicure. You got the Pegasus uh, painted airbrushed on you. Crazy black chicks with the rhinestones and they're three inches long. And everything. us guys, we don't even know what it is. Start painting on your toes. We don't even know. We don't even care. So like. Look, I don't want to see any, like, uh, dried fecal matter underneath the nail. But other than that, I don't care. As a matter of fact, wouldn't you say that most guys uh, like a, well, a clear nail polish on a, a shortish nail rather than a long nail? Not a, Definitely not a super long. Right. And, and, but, but uh, yeah, and, and not non-novelty appearing. But we don't want to even yeah. notice them. Yeah. You realize that we actually teased cuticle talk and came back and talked about cuticles? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. We're into this. <laughs> Brian, 17. Brian, sleeping. <laughs> oh, Brian is definitely sleeping. <laughs> Anderson. Never has uh, Anderson's uh, point been made so clearly. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? The kids love cuticle talk. I was thinking of making... Uh, I was thinking of making the uh, second hour medical dictionary hour. This evening, medical dictionary. It's a Webster's. Yeah, but I, just in general, we take take medical terms or, or terms that have to do with the body, and Drew looks them up Good and time. defines them over the air. Well, let's listen to the, the, our, our caller's uh, reaction. Nice. Yeah, but it's not the novelty s- snore we crave. He's 17. 17 year olds don't get that. They just get the heavy breathing thing. It makes makes you want to go to sleep. It's, it's like I listen to a child breathing. I think it's the, I think it's the show that makes you want to go to sleep. Drew. You know, it's that too, yeah, yeah. I think it's a cuticle talk. Yeah, it's a cuticle talk, Drew. Whose idea was that? Brian? No, Brian's asleep. <laughs> Brian's a goner. <laughs> All right, but keep him there because I want to check back with him and see if he's still asleep. All right. I'm going to take some bets on uh, whether he's asleep in like 10 minutes. I think it's more probable than even now. Yeah, me too. So what's what's the over under seven thirty tomorrow morning? Yes. <laughs> we got another Brian. Yeah, we got to move to another Brian. See, that's what I say about this show. There's always another Brian. Hello, Brian. Hello. You're fifteen. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's Brada. Got to give you guys kudos for putting up with all the assholes that call. Thank I, you. No one else would put up with that. Ooh, oh, Jesus! Oh my God. <laughs> okay. All right. You know my speech about uh, saying the S or F word on the air. Monica? Monica? Yes? You're 14? I am. What's up, sweet pea? Um, 
it's like me and my parents, we always fight and everything. And I get real frustrated at them. And I don't know why, because I love them to death. But it's just gotten to the point I don't even want to be around them or talk to them or see them or anything you, your, like that. Your mom and dad were talking about it. Uh, no, it's my grandma and my dad. My mom died when I was 11. Ooh, what happened? Uh, she had brain cancer. Oh, my God. Perfectly <laughs> normal, perfectly healthy. Is that something you've really dealt with? I mean, have you, have you grieved um, that? Have you? Well, it, a lot of people ask me about it. And it, at first, it was really hard for me to talk about it. But... um. Now it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it doesn't bother me as much, but, it, you know, it still hurts my feelings. Like, people are like, you know, stupid kids in middle school, they like that joke that your mama joke or whatever. And it's, I don't know, that still kind of gets under my skin, but I'm, it doesn't bother me as much anymore. What your mama joke are you talking about? I was like, well, you'll just say something like... Oh, yeah, and they go, your mama? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's that's got to be tough. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's, All right. it's getting better. Well, listen, Monica, I, I really... I, I, is there a 14-year-old teenage girl alive out there that doesn't get into it with her daddy? Is her dad... You know, is you your, know what I mean? Is your dad dating someone? Um, no, he's not. Is, uh, and so, is something about your mom's departure bugging you still? Um, I guess it kind of is. Like, me and my dad were talking about it earlier. We are in an argument earlier. And I... He he's he was asking me why I was mad at him, and I didn't. I told him I didn't know, and he started talking about my mom. Yeah. And sometimes my grand, uh, like my grandma, she gets she's like really annoying. And it, I think my sister, I feel sorry for her because she's only ten. And and I mean, like on Mother's Day, like I was like cried because she, her she come home bawling her eyes out. She's like. Oh, her teacher wanted her to make a Mother's Day thing for her mom. Oh, yeah. And she had to do it for her grandma. So. Yeah. Man, that's got to suck. You just got to get hit over the head with it everywhere yeah, you God. go yeah, with this the mom is, stuff. Yeah, this has got to be something related to that. I, I don't know why you are angry with your dad or your grandma for them having survived or even some guilt that you had survived. I, 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 don't, I don't know, but it, it definitely has something to do with that. Well, and, and naturally enough, the family's been disrupted. This yeah. is a huge tragedy. Tough time of life and, and, for her. And fourteen-year-old and Drew, get ready for this, baby. Oh. Fourteen-year-old girls are just and don't take this the wrong way, Monica. But huge pains in the ass. I mean, they're never happy. They're always this is they're mess. Uh. They're like some kind. They're on some sort of hormonal tear or something. Yeah. It's as if you know you know chicks are on their period. That's how they are from like fourteen to seventeen, uh -huh. just every day. It's uh -huh. like they don't they they hate everyone. They're embarrassed by everyone. Everything's like goofy and bad. And they, Ooh, get out of here! What do you want? I mean, my sister is the biggest pain in the ass. They hang around with other chicks that are just like them. They get into it with everyone, and they just they just hate like <clears throat> my sister just hated my stepdad, for instance. You know. My stepdad is like a vegetable, right? I mean, this guy, it's its like hanging out with him would be like hanging out with a can of paint, you know? Just He's just there. <laughs> he's a nice guy. Yeah. He doesn't talk. Right. Doesn't say anything. What's there to hate? That, that's what I was like. It's like, why do you hate the guy? He doesn't even do anything. Right. He doesn't even talk. He just sits there, pays the bills, you know? Pays the bills, goes to work, comes back, doesn't talk, and then goes back to work. And then I think he might off. talk at work. I'm not sure. I think maybe if they ask him a question. But it's like, you're, you're mad at this guy? He sits around. He does, like, it's not, he wasn't, she wasn't even living with him. It's not like she's ignoring, he's ignoring her. And he just sits there. It's like, how do you hate, how do you muster hate for this guy? He's not doing anything. No, no. Oh, no. And my stepmom, same thing. Although maybe she had a point there. Hmm. My stepmom wasn't doing anything at the time, didn't like her. You, you just you don't like anyone. You just look around like everyone. Everyone gets in your falls in your crosshairs. You just hate them. Right. You hate your dad. Right. You hate your dad. Everyone's everyone's, everyone's this and that. Whereas like seventeen year old guys or sixteen, fourteen year old guys, they're just trying to get porn and beer. Don't even. They're like, huh? Who? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. hey, what about your stepdad? Who? Yeah. Which one's he? They're blunted. Oh, can he score you some beer? Or has he got any porn? <laughs> oh, he does. Which dude? Is that the dude? I wonder if he'll let me borrow his car. I mean, that's it. That's all you want to do. He's like, can, can I borrow the guy's car? Is he going to drive me somewhere? Can he score me some beer? <laughs> that's it. 
And, and the, still, it's wild. No, but the chick's like, oh, I can't stand him. But the, clearly, in this, in the case of Marcus, no, well, she's got some. Yeah, she's got some stuff going on. I'm just saying, be, help be, be prepared when uh, when your daughter hits, hits 14. Oh, she's going to hate right, you. Right, right. You'll embarrass her. Everything's going to be embarrassing. Like, Dad, oh. why'd you have to show up? Uh. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's yeah. going to want you around. Oh yeah. She's going to be mad at you for uh, a, you know. Nothing. Her friends are going to come over. Dad, you wearing those dorky slippers around the, uh, everything? But let me tell you something. Don't back down. Brian? See, I told you. <laughs> More deeper sleep. We're getting into some ram action here. All right, really? See, the depth of the, 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 the depth and the slow respirations. Brian is 17. Deeper sleep. You know what Brian's dreaming about? How his stepdad can score him some beer or get him some porn or lend him the car. You know, you know That's all this. It's you know a never-ending cycle wait. of where can I get beer and chips. What's interesting is Brian's question was he's not gone through puberty. And listen to his snoring. I, didn't I say it sounded like a little kid, like a child? Yeah. It doesn't have that coarse... No, it does not have that man, manly yeah. sc- snore. Right. It sounds like my kid's snoring. I'm sleeping. <laughs> picked up the pace a little because maybe in his dream he found the guy to buy him the beer or get him the porn the porn okay let's put brian back on hold we'll keep checking uh back with him amber yeah you're 18 uh-huh what's up um well uh, about uh five five days ago um i got this really big lump on my on my right uh vagina lip Mm-hmm. And I and I didn't really know what it was, or where it had came from. I thought that um, maybe it, well, because the day before I, I didn't wear any underwear, mm-hmm. and I thought maybe I got irritated or it's just a bump inside the lip. Yeah, it's a cyst, and is it hard or tender? Well, see, it, it went away. I know. Is, is it hard or it's not straight? Is it hard or is it hurt or tender? It doesn't hurt at all. It went away. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But it uh, doesn't. It didn't hurt when it was there. No, it, it kind of. Um, there was some heat, but it didn't itch. Yeah, these cysts will come and go. Sometimes they can get infected, and you need to take hot baths, and sometimes you need to go on antibiotics for them. But they're very common. Oh, okay. So yeah. I shouldn't like. It's not the last one you're going to get. Okay. All right, All right baby. All right. Thank you. You take care of yourself, right? All right. Hey, and good times, though, right? Okay. Bye. What'd she say? Bye. No, she said something before that, Mike. Yeah. You're 16. Uh-huh. You're scared of spiders? Yeah. 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 I was just thinking about that today as I uh, left the house. I, um, you know, the weather gets hot. Weather's getting hot. You walk into spider webs when you leave your house now. Oh, yeah. Weather gets hot and everything's alive. Yeah. Spiders, though. They're they're cruising. Yeah. This is spider season. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 the time. It, but I... No, there's a, I, I was going to bed last night. There's a big spider on my ceiling. I had to get him. Yeah. I was leaving uh, the house uh, tonight, running late as usual, and uh, there was one of those silver fish <laughs> on the walls. Like it, it gets hot, and uh, my my uh, my house turns it turns. It, I'm all of a sudden I'm in the rainforest or something. I don't like that. I look out the window. I see a rat scurry by. Ooh, yeah. Look, it's hot, and everything everything comes out. Mm-hmm. There's roaches walking around the sidewalk. There's spiders in your house. What is that? I don't know, but the spiders sure come out. I now. wish they'd go away. <laughs> Make them go away, Mike. I'll try. All right, so how? why are you freaked out about spiders? I don't know. You just, you've just you always been gay? Oh, yeah, right. No, you just always you ever been bit by one? You had any trouble with one? I don't know. I've been bit by them in the past. Nothing like awful but i don't know just the thought of them like around and like in my bed now the the the, uh the screen says that you're uh going to uh southeast asia yeah the rainforest what are you doing there um kind of just trekking and like traveling by yourself no it's with a student group you're 16 yeah Jesus Christ, I went to the Laurie seasoning plant <laughs> in Burbank when I was 16 for a field trip. You're going to Southeast Asia? <laughs> yeah. I've had an ass full of this girl. He's <laughs> mocking me. What is this? You're 16, you're going to Asia? I went to the uh, the seasoning plant in Glendale. Got a sampler pack of uh, taco seasoning to take home with me. What kind of life is this? 
What kind of school are you going to? I go to public school. Is, it, is this through the school or is it through a church? No, it's through a private organization. Kids who uh, parents, do way too much before they're 20, is that what it's called? Your, your parents yeah. teach at Stanford? No. Uh, no? No. Do your parents have money? Yeah. Okay. So you're going in. You're going through the rainforest, and um, and you're going to be camping, or? Uh, yeah. So so you're worried about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you voice your concern to the camp people? Yeah, voice your concern to whoever the uh, pedophile scout leader is, or whoever it is, and and say to them, you know, what 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 kind of precautions are you going to? Because I'm sure they're going to have the nets and the bags and the this and the that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But as far as sort of getting over it, this trip is going to get you over it. Hopefully, yeah. This is this is what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what you can do before you get there. Mm-hmm. I mean, Drew, what about uh, deconditioning or something? hypnotherapy for something like this? Yeah, maybe, maybe it works. I mean, maybe. if you're totally freaked out by it, yeah. maybe you should. It, well, it makes sense that what, what I have found in people that have phobias, if they have some experience without evoking the fear, right. they sort of conquer the fear. Like fly and that kind of thing. And so if you can be around spider and not have the fear manifest. In fact, sometimes just taking a, a medication that blocks the physiologic response of, of the fear called a beta blocker. Right. Keeps your heart rate from being accelerated and that kind of thing. It tends to give people a mastery experience that helps them get over All this right. stuff. And look into uh, any one of these options. Yep. We've got to take a break. Yep. Brian? Well, there he is. <laughs> going a little fast there. Tastes like a squirrel. Whistling. A little whistle at the end of the inspiration. You hear it? What do you think's going through young Brian's mind right now? I think he is. A Seven, pirate 17, ship with a bunch of his sister's friends. No. <laughs> Where is he? He hasn't had puberty yet, remember? Ooh. Yeah. You hear that little stutter step? He could be at Disneyland. <laughs> So you don't, yeah, he's not, not dreaming about his stepdad scoring him beer. No, well, he's 17. Just because he didn't go through puberty doesn't mean he's not, uh... Hmm. Where do you think the phone is positioned that uh, we can hear him snoring clearly? I think he's lying on his side with the ear thing pressed against his ear. Yeah, but if the ear thing is pressed against his ear, then he can hear us, yeah, right? he's asleep. Yeah, you know but... If I was asleep... Oh, and, you and have that crazy-ass way of sleeping. The, most, the rest of humans, when they sleep, you're, you're dead to the world. You are? Really? Yeah. It, it, well, uh, there's a lot of people that are listening that if they were asleep... Well, look, how do you wake up when someone walks in the room and says, wake up, or says your name? Most people don't. They have really? to shake you. They have to really get you. They push you? They have to come and really... I, I, some people have to take my fist and drive it into their chest to get them to wake up. Seriously. You know... Oh... <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, why don't you just hit them with a folding chair? Just take your, your, your fist and put it in their sternum? Yeah, we have to do that. Yeah. Beat them about the chest? Oh, hold on. Brian? He fell over. <laughs> Brian? He rolled over. He, he was showing you that he was positioned the way I told you he was. He's no longer listening. All right, but let's see if we can still hear him snore, God willing. No, the phone's off the bed. Well, I think I hear something. You know, it'd be great. Uh, it'd be great if we heard an intruder break into the house and kill him. Great. Well, medium. I mean, good radio. All right, let's take a break. We'll leave Brian. Let's still leave Brian. Don't hang up on him. Maybe he'll roll over and we'll hear him again. I'm not sure what percentage of uh, radio shows uh, listens to their uh, caller snore with a you know, fair regularity. We're secure. <laughs> Yeah, well, like I said, it's a it's a it's a two hour show that feels like ninety five minutes. That's that's although it felt longer to young Brian. And right, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Sorry, meet shit. Hey, everybody, it's the Love Line. Yeah, let's rock, Drew. Are you ready to rock? Oh yeah, let's rock. All right. Well, let's, let's see if Brian's rocking. All right. Brian? Brian? No, no I don't hear it. The phone uh-huh. just fell off. It's still on the air, though. All right. <laughs> hey, should we get rid of Brian now? Yeah. I'm not hearing him snore anymore. Yeah, it's no fun anymore. 
Listen, everybody, if you're going to phone in the show and not snore and just lie there asleep, don't bother phoning in. There's no entertainment value at all for us. I like your good novelty snoring. Melissa? Yeah? Good fat guy snoring. <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, my uh, other partner, Jimmy, snores and denies it. These oh, are the people I like. He does not. Yeah, I'm like, Jimmy, yeah, yeah, you sn I don't want to stay in the same hotel room as you. You snore. No, I don't. Oh, my it's God. Like, hey, what, what do you mean you don't? I've stayed in a room with you eight times. I, you snore. No, no, I don't. It's, well, come on. Get serious. It's like, what, what am I doing? Making this? Why am I making it up? What is that? No, nah, I don't snore. It's like he'll deny it. He snores. He's not a horrible snore, but he, of course. he'll snore into the gas. <laughs> the gas is enough. M Melissa? Yeah. All right. What's up there, sweet pea? Um, I'm 18, and my boyfriend have been together three and a half years, and we've had sex recently a couple of times. And he always pulls out, but I heard that it's still possible to get pregnant even if he pull out. And Abs I was wondering if this is true. Absolutely true. It is? Absolutely. Of course. The stuff that comes out of the tip before he ejaculates that is concentrated in sperm. So, you're going to get pregnant if you don't watch it. you got to get on some birth control. Yeah. I, I, I know that. I live on my own, though, so I, I have no insurance, and I didn't know how to get any. Planned Parenthood. 1-800-230-PLAN. They'll refer you, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Right, take care of yourself. Why are you living on your own? Um, It's a long story that I don't think you guys have time for. <laughs> Can you give it in a sentence? Um, it's my senior year in high school, and my parents recently transferred to another state, and I didn't want to go. All right. So I turned 18, and I said no. Wow. Are they helping support you? They are as they can, but I mean, money's tight, so I'm basically self-supportive. Yeah. Mm. Would you work? I do. I work full-time. And Between that and school. And you, go to, you work full-time and go to school? Uh-huh. How does that work? How do, how do you work full-time? Um, I get out of school at noon. And you work till... Till nine, late. Nine o'clock at night or something? Yeah, and then I get up and start that and eight over again. Where do you... I, you're saying you do it the next day, too? Yeah. Oh, Let me write this down. How about the studying part? Oh, yeah. Sorry, well, the studying? studying? Yeah. Well, senior year is kind of a joke. Yeah. We don't really have school. Right. It's right. more of just hanging out and having fun. All right. Okay. What kind of what kind of place do you work at? Waitress? A daycare. Daycare? And then um, I have a second job, waitressing. Waitress. Waitressing. Waitressing. Right, uh -huh. So I got Ferrell's. that part right. All right. Uh -huh. All right, baby. You're working hard. God okay. bless you. Don't get pregnant. I won't. All right. That'd kill me. <laughs> oh, take care of yourself. <laughs> take care of yourself, baby. Thank you. Yeah. Oof. See, Drew, you're always worried about paying for college and all that kind of You can just dump your kids. <laughs> My parents just dump their kids. It's like nothing. Mm -hmm. they, they get by. Mm -mm. But, you know, you know, people are like, uh, they're like dogs. There's uh, Zsa Zsa Gabor's dog that has to fly first class with her. And then there's dogs that just sort of live, they live in alleys and stuff. They, they'll do it. They'll make it. They'll be fine. They can. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You think Zsa Zsa Gabor's uh, dog likes her any more than the guy, uh, the hobo dog? No. Don't you always feel Maybe bad that. for the hobo uh, dog? See the guy's pushing the cart and he's got the hobo and you're like, ah, poor dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think to myself, well, what about the guy? Well, that's why they have the dog. They, they want that. They, they knew they can't get any sympathy for themselves. But really? for the animal, oh yeah, now you're paying me a dollar. Right. Feed the dog, okay? Oh, that's true. Daisy? Yes. You're 20? Yep. Can you turn down whatever's uh, up in the background, please? Okay. All righty. I'm going to go to a different room. Yeah. Okay. All right, what's up? Well, um, I have a question. Uh, we have these sex shops in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. You know, that sell vibrators and porn. And Wait a minute. So like in that? Oklahoma, they have these shops? Sex shops? I guess they, they've probably not made it out to the West Coast yet. I'm never. I'm, I'm outraged. <laughs> I could see it though. They're, they'll be opening here soon, probably. No, no never. Yeah. No, that's no. the way it goes. No. Starts in Oklahoma, works its way out to California. Yeah. All right. So, well, um, they have this cream. There's two different stores in Oklahoma, and one has a cream called Tight Again, <laughs> and the other one has a cream called Miso Tight. <laughs> right. 
That's and a soup, isn't it? Huh? Miso, miso tart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not a soup. Oh, okay. But um, the cream is supposed to make you, you're supposed to put it, like, down there. Mm-hmm. Tighten you up, right? Yeah, it's supposed to tighten you up. Yep. You like, use that in uh, conjunction with the dong hardening catalyst, and you, uh, you, got, a, you got an evening. Right. Well, why my, are you? Why first of all, first of all, it's a BS. Secondly, why are you worried about this? Well, I was wanting to know if it really worked. It doesn't work. Why are you worried about this? Because, well, I have never tried it before, and my friend said it worked. But well, I'm also why would you even want to begin? Because her friend. No. Why, Daisy? <laughs> I, I don't know. All right, it's Just, not good. Don't. Are you having sex with a guy? Uh, yes. Okay, he's happy. Uh huh. Just don't worry about it. He's fine. But, um, the, well, the, um, cream, um, if I do decide to use it, yeah. the cream, like, no. cause a rash or... Pro possibly, yes. but why would you want to use it? I don't know, because it's, you know, it's one of those things in a sex shop, and, you know, when I, like, yeah, but buy something what? sex oh, life. Oh, my gosh, she can't. Are you high? No. What, what is this a, you go to junior college? No. No, you don't go to any college, right? Mm-mm. Too, even, too dumb for junior college. No, I'm a certified nurse aide. Uh oh, crazy! What happened, baby? All nurses are crazy. Why is that, Drew? All right, hey Daisy. Uh huh. This stuff does not work. Uh, you have to be high to think it does. And uh, and, and I don't know why you want to fix something that will, ain't broken anyway. Yeah, no guy is not going to make a difference to any guy on earth. Unless you, you really want some someone uh, a nurse uh, shopping for this stuff. Oh my god. She's liable to uh, in, in, inject you with, like, a liquid mercury or something. Uh, let's take a break. We'll be back. All right. That's it, everybody. Thanks a heap for uh, tuning in tonight, especially young Brian who fell asleep. And uh. then, not only fell asleep, but he fell over. Hey, your buddy Tim Stack. Tim tonight. Stack is coming in here tonight, uh, Come on, tomorrow night. Yeah. Technically tonight, actually. Oh, yeah. uh, he is uh, from uh, Son of the Beach, that uh, funny Howard Stern show that I'm going to be on in a couple episodes, and he'll plug that, and i got a big big episode coming up, big hour-long one, and uh, i am uh, like got a main part in it, so it'll be kind of fun. He's a real funny guy, so it'll be good to see you tomorrow night, and until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying, Mahalo. What turn do you gay, son? I, I don't think... Son, you can be honest with me. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.